Hey, what's going on, friends? It's Jonathan. Welcome back to another JC production. I hope you guys are doing well and you're enjoying my Note 10 and Note 10 Plus content. If you're not caught up on those videos, make sure to check out the playlist, give them a watch, you might learn a thing or two. In this video, I'm gonna be going over how I have my Note 10 Plus set up, some useful apps on my phone that I really think could be beneficial to you. The first thing we're gonna go over is the wallpaper that I'm using. I get asked all the time, what wallpaper is that? Where can I get it? Well, this is the wallpaper that I'm using. I did have a dragon one, but I got them from the same place. And uh, I just really like this wolf one a little bit more than the dragon because wolves are just my favorite animal. I also have the stationary or non-motion wallpaper to go with it, as you can see right here for my home screen. And I'll leave links to both of these wallpapers down below. They did cost me a little bit of money. I got them from the Samsung Galaxy theme store, but those links can be found in the description. Before I forget, the screen protector that I'm using is from Whitestone Dome. This is my favorite screen protector for any device. It leaves no gap. It wraps around the display. Touchscreen sensitivity is perfect. The oleophobic coating is awesome and clarity is on point. I got a lot of comments in my first Note 10 video for the first 10 things that you should do once you get your device. People were saying, why would you need a screen protector if it comes with a pre-installed one? The reason why I upgraded my screen protector is because the one that's pre-installed is really thin. It's only good for scratch protection. I'll go ahead and leave a link to the screen protector down in the description. So make sure to check it out. If you're interested, you can find it down there. As you can see, I'm not using the stock One UI launcher. Instead, I'm using Nova. I just prefer Nova. I know a lot of people say that Nova consumes more system resources and it can bog down your phone, but I've never run into that issue. So one of the reasons why I like Nova is if you hold and press on your home screen and then go into your settings, these are all the options that you can customize your home screen, your app drawer, your folders. And as you can see, it is blacked out because of the built in dark mode that Nova offers. If I go into my app drawer, you can see it is also black. This is actually going to help with battery life because this is an AMOLED display. And since this is a black mode and not just a dark mode, those pixels can be entirely shut off. It's not going to be much, but it's still something. The icon pack I'm using is Pixiful. So if we go back into the settings and then go under look and feel, tap on icon style and then icon theme, it's Pixiful. You do have to pay for this icon pack, but I really like it. And if I swipe over to the right, I have my Google Now feed, again, done in a dark mode. This is um, the Google Companion add-on that you can download through Nova's website. I'll leave a link to it down below. It doesn't come in the Play Store. You do have to download it separately. Works like a boss gives me my Google Now feed instead of Bixby, we're good. The other thing I have going on is a theme. So I have Nova, a custom icon pack, and then a Galaxy theme. So if I go into my settings and then go under wallpapers and themes, go under themes, and then look at all of my themes, you can see I'm using the black theme. Now I was using Burnt Pie, but it had a lot of issues with Nova, and things that I really couldn't overlook. So I had to switch it. And instead of buying a new one, I realized the pre-installed Samsung black theme is excellent. Now let me show you again how to access that. I got a lot of questions. So go into your settings, go under wallpapers and themes, go under themes, and then pull down, go under view all for my themes, and then select the black theme. Again, it's gonna help a little bit with battery life and it just looks really good in my personal opinion. Plus it blacks out the dialer and it blacks out other um, you know, stock applications. I almost forgot to mention that I do have a few gestures set up inside of Nova. So if I pull down anywhere on the home screen, I can access my notification shade. And if I pull up from anywhere on the home screen, I can pull up my app drawer. I can also double tap on the home screen to lock my phone. Another double tap will turn on the lock screen and then I can go into my phone. These things aren't anything big or new, but they just make the experience a little bit better. To set these up, just hold down on your home screen and then go into Nova settings and then find where it says gestures and inputs. And then you can customize all of these gestures to however you want to. Samsung got rid of the notification LED on the Note 10. However, with this app, you can bring it back kind of. It's using the light that lights up your camera whenever you're using the, uh, the timer functionality and capturing a selfie. So the app is called AOD Notify or Always On Display Notify. It's a free app, but you can pay $2.99 to unlock the pro features. I did not pay the $2.99, so I'm running the basic features and it works just fine. Let me give you a quick example of how it works whenever the screen is turned off. So I have my iPhone here. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly send myself a message and then lock my phone. 
you're gonna see the notification LED or the little ring pop up right there. Now, one thing that it does that's kind of funky is instead of lighting up around the front facing camera, it moves the circle down whenever the screen is turned off. And then once you turn the screen on, it will move the circle back up to around the camera. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It is a little annoying. I don't understand why it can't stay around the camera part whenever the screen is turned off. It might be a limitation of the always on display, but honestly, it's something that I can live with because I do like that functionality. The AOD Notify app features a ton of different settings. So if you go into the notification settings, you can assign which apps will take advantage of this feature. You can also assign whether or not the phone is going to display the notification LED whenever it's unlocked, or if it displays a notification LED for non-removable notifications. There's a lot of things that you can do inside this app, so I highly suggest that you just go inside it and play with it and understand what each setting does and make it work for you. It was a little finicky to get working correctly. What I had to do was go into edge lighting and then switch from screen edges to camera edge and then also go into settings and make sure that always on is checked instead of only on notification. That was the only way I could get it to work. Um, your phone might be different and if you have a better way, let me know down in the comment section. Another app that I have on here from the same developer is called Side Actions. And what it allows you to do is customize the functionality of these buttons over here. Now by default, you can customize the Bixby button or the power button for the long press. So if you long press it, you can either have it as a power button or you can have it as the Bixby button. That's the only thing Samsung allows you to do using Samsung software. And if you double press it, well, that's where your functionality comes in and you can customize that, but you cannot assign Google Assistant. However, with side actions, you can, and you can do a whole lot more, including customizing the volume buttons. So the way I have mine set up is if I hold down the power button, it's going to trigger Google Assistant. If I double press, it's going to pull up my camera. And then if I tap once and then hold, so tap once then hold, it's going to pull up my power menu. This is awesome. Moving up to the volume buttons, I have nothing set up for the volume up button, but for the volume down, because it's so close to the power button and I can access it without having to shimmy or slide my hand, a double press turns on the flashlight. And then if I double press it again, it turns it off. And then a press and hold will take a screenshot. So press and hold, boom, I just took a screenshot. I absolutely love the functionality and customization of this application. They do warn that Samsung could block it at any time. So before updating your phone, make sure to check to see that it's safe. Again, going back into the app, it is a free app, but to unlock all of the features, you're gonna need to pay $2.99 as well as hook it up to a PC or your Mac and run some scripts or a .exe file. It's not a big deal. It takes like two seconds. It doesn't take long at all. It's easier on Windows than it is on Mac, but there is a good walkthrough online. I'll link it down below. As you can see, the app layout is very similar to AOD Notify. If I tap on the power button, I have tons of functionality and customization options right here. And the same thing with the volume buttons. Before I get into these next few apps, let me quickly say that I am an avid iPhone user. I've been locked down to iOS and macOS for years because of my family and the ecosystem. All of my family uses iOS and macOS devices, so I rely on it for FaceTime, for iMessage, and from a business aspect, I rely on it for AirDrop. However, I found a few apps that brought back some of that functionality, made it universal, and I have them on my note. I've done a few videos on this, so I'll link them in the description or at a card at the top. If you don't see a card, check the description, it's down there. But the first one is called Air Message. So if you are new to the Note 10 and you're coming over from an iPhone, you're really going to appreciate Air Message. So over here, I have my iPhone 10R. What I'm gonna do is send a 4K video from my Galaxy Note 10 to my iPhone 10R. We're gonna go into the gallery. This is a 4K video. We're gonna tap on the little share options here. Go to Air Message, tap on my name, and then send it. To prove that it's a 4K video, let me go back into the gallery and then go to details. You can see it's 3840 by 2160. So this is definitely a 4K video. I'm gonna go back, go back into air message and it's already sent. Should populate over here any minute now. And any minute, boom, there we go. So if I play it back, you can see the quality is pretty much perfect. 
that's Air Message, how to get iMessage on Android. It works flawlessly for the most part. You do have to have a computer that can run 24 seven for the server, just bear that in mind. It's a free app, totally worth it. I did a few videos on it, so make sure to check those out. The next thing I was missing was AirDrop, but there's an app called Send Anywhere, which to me is better than AirDrop because it doesn't matter what operating system you're running, it still gives you the benefits of AirDrop. So let me show you. We're gonna go into the gallery and we're gonna send over a few pictures. So we'll select the images and we'll do a GIF, an image, and a video clip. We're gonna go to the share menu, tap on send anywhere, and you can see my phone right here. Tap on iPhone and tap on the notification. We'll go ahead and receive those files. And it's just like as if I were to AirDrop the files from my MacBook over to my computer. It's not as seamless because that is definitely embedded into the ecosystem that Apple offers, but it is really, really close. So I, you can see I've already received the files. We can open them up, they're right there. And if I go into my photos application, there they are. So there's the video file, there's the GIF, and there's the still. This is easily one of my favorite applications ever. I love the functionality of AirDrop combined with versatility because you're not limited by your operating system. They offer an app for all platforms and you get the same functionality all across the board. Plus it's a free app. Bitdefender Total Security is my form of protection. And honestly, I have it installed on all of my devices, including my laptop, my desktop, and all of my mobile phones. I know that all Samsung phones ship with Knox, which is a form of security, but it's been proven over and over again that there are tons of apps in the Play Store that have malware embedded in them. And as a backup form of protection, I have Bitdefender on my phone. Not only does it scan every app that gets installed on my phone, but it also scans all the files that are stored on my phone to make sure there's nothing going on that shouldn't be going on. It also has a built-in VPN, which is great for travel. And if you use public access Wi-Fi a lot, such as like a coffee shop, um, right now I can give you a free like 90 day trial to Bitdefender Total Security, which is for your desktop. But if you are a subscriber of that, you do get mobile security for free. That link is in the description. Make sure to check them out. They have the best form of protection in my humble and personal opinion. Well, friends, that was a quick look at what I'm using on my Note 10 Plus, as well as my setup. Hopefully you were able to take some apps from this video, apply them to your own phone and make the experience a little bit better. If you guys have any suggestions to what I should be putting on my phone or to future videos, it doesn't have to be note related. Let me know down in the comment section or hit me up on social. Social I prefer, I do respond a little bit faster there. I have many more videos planned, including my favorite photo and video apps uh, for the Note 10 Plus and Android in general. Also an in-depth look at the video editor on the Note 10 Plus and a video on Dex. So if you don't wanna miss that, click the subscribe button and enable those notifications so you can be alerted when that content drops. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys take care and I will talk to you wonderful people in the next video.